Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special version of our noodle making class today. Um, my name is Akira Mi. Um, I work for Yamato Manufacturing Company. And uh, we are broadcasting uh, live from um, uh, headquarter, our headquarter uh, in Kagawa. For those of you who don't know where Kagawa is, uh, please Google it later. Let's, uh, let's get started. Um, so first, uh, what we're going to do is that like we're going to get into, um, you know, lecture part, uh, which can be a bit boring, but, um, you know, I'm going to do my best. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, ramen today, ramen noodles, how the ramen noodles are made. And um, yeah, and then like lecture part, and like we're going to get into like ingredients that are used for ramen noodles, and then like noodle making processes. And uh, we're uh, actually gonna make uh, some one type of noodle today, which is like Hakata style tonkotsu noodles. Um, for those of you who don't know where Hakata is, like that's like in, uh, in the city of Kyushu Island. Um, that's where the all the like very famous like Hakata style tonkotsu noodle is like originated. And then later, um, you know, we're gonna show you, we're gonna teach you like how to cook the noodles properly, and then how to serve the bowl of ramen. And then uh, that's going to be done by um, some of our instructors. Uh, OK, uh, so let's get started. Yeah, let me but first like introduce our uh, company first. Uh, so for those of you who don't know what, um, you know, what we do. Uh, so like we have manufactured noodle making machines um, that are designed to do um, some noodles for like restaurants, small production. And uh, so we've been doing that for like 45 years. And we started uh, offering um, training courses, um, you know, udon school, ramen school, soba school, um, about like 20 years ago. Um, because like a lot of more and more customers like we are getting are, you know, becoming like more and more like amateurs, like, you know, who have like no experience, like in running restaurants, noodle restaurants. So, you know, we thought like we had to like start teaching it. Um, so we have a school uh, like this. In Kagawa, like in Tokyo, and then uh, we also like have a school in Singapore, and then we we'll, we are building like other schools like in different um, parts of the world right now. And uh, so, and then um, so later we're gonna show you guys like introduce our school a little bit and like what we do at our school, what we teach at our school. Um, yeah, and then like uh, we um, do this kind of class um, like for one day, like in different parts of the world, like. We've been doing this like, you know, like in Netherlands, been doing this like New York, doing this like in Singapore and other places. Um, but like, you know, because of this um, current situation, like with the uh, COVID-19, uh, you know, we thought like, you know, we should uh, start doing this, offering this kind of class online. And uh, for those of you like who are interested in like, if there's like some subject, like if there's some topics that you want to learn more about, um, please feel free to let us know. And uh, we are gonna continue to do this kind of class um, from now on. So please uh, let us know. All right, um, so we're gonna get into the lecture first and then like um, start making some noodles. Okay, um, so we did the introduction. Um, and uh, this is just the, like a world map, like where uh, our customers are like using our machines. Like, so, you know, we've been like, exporting our machines like more to more and more countries. Um, currently, like we have like customers in 61 countries and then counting. And we also have like partners, uh, distributors, different parts of the world. Sorry. So ramen noodles um, are, uh, there are many types of like ramen noodles. Like there'll be, there could be like thousands and thousands of different types of ramen noodles. But it's, uh, you know, but like we, we usually categorize ramen noodles by um, hydration ratio, like how much water is contained in the dough. Um, then we're gonna touch, get in touch on that uh, more, more later, um, ingredients, right? And then like, we're gonna do the, we're gonna talk about like production processes and like methods. Okay, let's uh, look at this chart, right? Um, so there are many types of noodles, ramen noodles, but like um, we can categorize ramen noodles in this chart, um, like the hydration ratio, so like how much water is contained, the noodles. Um, you see this like x-axis, 
of this uh, chart that represents the uh, hydration ratio, like how much. So the left, left, uh, left, like from the left, that's like 25 percent to like to the right towards the right, like more water, like 45 percent. Um, and then vertical uh, y-axis represents like protein content of the flour that's used to make these noodles. Um, so the higher the protein content, the uh, harder the noodle texture. The lower the protein, the softer. And then less water, uh, harder the noodle texture. The more water, softer. And you see that like it's kind of hard to see, but like on the right hand side corner, like right, right hand side, like there's like um, uh, it says like size noodle sizes. These are the like uh, size of the cutters that are used to cut these noodles. So like um, from the top like 1.0 millimeter to like 2.5 millimeter, um, that's uh, that's how thick the noodle is. So you notice this is like a green round circle like in the uh, upper left corner, like that's called a Hakata ramen. That's kind of, that's the noodle like we have an action make in the noodle making uh, part. Um, you see that that's like high in protein content and then low in water content. So that's, that's hard noodle, that's hard noodle. And then you see that's uh, between like 1.1 millimeter and like 1.3 millimeter, that's like thin noodle. So like that's thin and hard noodle. But if you look at the, uh, like a yellow circle, like on the right, um, uh, the bottom uh, right corner, uh, it's called like sukemen noodles, like dipping noodles. So that's really thick noodle that, you know, that you um, dip it in that like an intense, like flavored uh, soup and then eat it. Um, so that's like uh, high in water content, but low in protein content. So uh, that's soft uh, noodles, like, but like, it's, see, it's very thick, like, you know, between like 1.7 millimeter, like 2.5 millimeter. So it's very thick. It's a thick and soft noodle, right? And then you see this chart, like, you know, there's a, where the, the circles are like kind of scattered around. You see the patterns. So it's either, either like thin and hard noodle or like thick and soft noodle. Um, there, there's no like noodles that are like thick and hard or thin and soft because you know, that's not a good combination for a noodle texture. So um, you see the pattern. So the texture wise, like, you know, your noodles should be, should fall on like somewhere in between, thin and hard, like, or thick and soft. Okay. Yeah, I forgot to mention, but like all of these uh, stuff like we are going through are actually available in our blog called like Noodle Master Lab. So for those of you like who want to know more about what we are going to like what we're talking about today, uh, let's please check back in the, our um, noodle uh, master lab blog. Um, okay, let's talk about ingredients. So to make ramen noodles, you just need like three ingredients: flour, like wheat flour, and water, and kansui. Let's talk about these. Okay, so the wheat flour, right? Um, this is the mo like most important um, component of the uh, ramen noodles because like it, um, uh, it composes a lot of, uh, you know, like 70% of the, like 60%, 70% like, uh, of, like the, the noodle weight. Um, so what's important, like we all talked about like protein uh, in that chart. So the protein content, um, that makes the noodle harder or softer. Um, so that's like between like seven and 13%. Uh, the less protein, the softer, right? And then ash, there's an ash. Um, this is like amount of minerals like contained in the flour. Um, the, you know, it's like outer part of like a wheat grain. Uh, so they, in the milling process, like they uh, try to get rid, get rid of like as much of this uh, ash as possible, like in the milling process, but like some are left in that flour. Um, and then, um, the higher the ash, the darker the, the, the color of the new noodle is going to be. Um, so, but we are talking about like, you know, 0.5%, like 0.4%. Um, yeah, in Japan, like in, the flowers in Japan, like have like really small percentage of like ash content. Um, but, you know, like, I guess like overseas, um, you probably come across like flower with uh, like, 
high ash content, like you know, 0.5 percent, 0.6 percent. Um, yeah, and if you care about like more like uh, ash content, then I mean the color noodle, noodle, like you should find like a flower with like low ash content. Um, viscosity, the viscosity is like very important too. Um, so it's uh, how elastic the noodle can be. For higher the viscosity, like more elastic the noodle. So um, viscosity is uh, very important, but it does not show up on the um, uh, product label. So you need to um, actually get it tested um, with the machine. Uh, and we, 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 have, we actually have this machine like to test this uh, viscosity value. So uh, yeah, we can test it for you, like free of charge. Um, all right, so that's flour, like uh, protein, ash, viscosity. Those three things like you need to look for like when trying to find a good flour for ramen. And the water is very important too. Uh, the kind of water we use is a soft water. Uh, and why it's important is that like, you know, like soft water, hard water, you, you got hard water right before. And then uh, soft water doesn't have like much minerals in it. Um, Hard water has like minerals like magnesium, like calcium. And, uh, you know, when you cook noodles, um, it's like all this stuff like salt, like calcium and stuff like that, like are trying to get out of the noodles into a cooking water. But if you're using cooking water that's hard, then there's less room, you know, in this, in, like in the respiration um, for these uh, ingredients to be released to. So, um, you know, you need more room uh, to cook the noodles faster. Um, if you can cook like noodle faster, the better the texture. So the water is very important. And if you have to work with the hard water, then you should um, uh, find that you should need to like uh, get, in, get the softener installed. All right, um, Kansi, yeah. So this is the kind of something special you need to have like for your noodles to be cold like ramen. In Japan, like as a definition, like you have to have like Kansi. Uh, in your noodles to be called um, ramen. Uh, can see basically like there are many types, but like basically the way we use like potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate, combination of them. Um, potassium carbonate makes the noodles harder and then change the color to the yellow. Um, sodium carbonate does the exact opposite. Um, if you, and then like higher the potassium carbonate, um, and then we, we sort of like blend them to use it. Um, and then so, because uh, potassium carbonate makes the noodle harder, uh, we use more potassium carbonate to, for um, thin noodles, when we make thin noodles, because we want to make the thin noodle like harder. So we increase the amount of potassium carbonate. And then we'll, we'll show you guys um, all these ingredients later. And then, um, sorry, there are many other um, ingredients that are used. Because uh, salt, eggs, egg white, um, whole eggs like gluten, uh, and the coloring, like flavoring, um, things like, for example, like spinach, like uh, squid ink, like chili, uh, and other types of like grain flour, whole, whole wheat, like rye, um, yeah, different things like. So you can make basically like um, unlimited types of like ramen noodles. And um, yeah, and then like productivity of like ramen noodles um, is actually pretty high. Um, so like um, cost of like producing like one serving of ramen noodles like, you know, ranges from like maybe like less than 10 cents, like in some cases um, to like 25 cents or so, including the labor cost. So it's very, I mean, you know, how much you can sell it for, then, you know, you, you can figure out like how much profit you can make. Okay. So let's talk about like uh, different types of ramen noodles um, by hydration. So we basically categorize ramen noodles by three, uh, hydration to like three types. Um, so low hydration, like that's like between like 25%, 29%, medium like 30%, 39% high uh, hydration, like over like 40%. Um, so basically like, um, yeah, um, in the mixing process, like so first, like we mix the, uh, these like ingredients to make dough. So the lower the um, hydration, uh, the longer we had to mix to uh, mix to make dough properly. And um, yes, yeah, so you see this in this picture, like 
um, gradually we you know increase the like amount of like water we added to the flow. And 30%, for example, like 30% hydration means that is that like there's um, so for 10 kilograms of like flour, we are adding three kilograms of like water liquid to it. Okay, let's talk about start talking about like product processes. Um, so first, like we weigh ingredients, and this is the like most important process. It's like if you screw up, screw up like all the uh, amount, like weight of the ingredients, then you know you will end up like, well, not the, not great uh, noodles. So um, weighing of ingredients like is very important. Um, the mixing and the resting. So after like we mix it, like we rest it, rest the dough. Rest the dough like this. So we pre-mix like all these like uh, noodles and um, dough, and then uh, like so just like low water content, like 28%. It's like medium water content, 35%. High water content, like 42%. Um, so you see that like the size of the uh, the chunks of the noodles. See like this is like 28%, almost like a powder, and it's like medium. A bit chunky a little bit, like big chunks. Okay, so like mixing um, process in mixing process, like so high for um, low water content noodles, like we um, mix it for like almost like 15 minutes. So that's a long time, but like, um, you know, we you have to like mix it uh, for a little bit to, um, you know, get the like proper, uh, ingredient, I mean, the, the dough. And you see it in the picture in the corner, like uh, right hand side corner, like that's the gluten structure of the dough. Like that's like developing in, a, um, in that resting process. So after we mixing, like, you know, see that like in that, as you saw, like in the plastic bag, like we put the dough into plastic bag and let's, let it sit for like a certain amount of time to uh, degas, degas it and then like, um, you know, help like develop like gluten structure inside the dough. Okay, and uh, next process like rough forming, and then uh, we're gonna talk. We're gonna sh explain these processes like when uh, we actually make noodles later. And then of um, thinning, like um, and the cutting, portioning. Uh, we'll explain it later. And then um, in cooking. So. Cooking noodles, cooking noodles, like, you know, um, this is actually also on, like, our blog, but, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll explain it later, like, when we actually cook noodles, but uh, you need, the point is that, like, you, you need to have, like, um, you know, a lot of water to cook it properly, and then uh, you need to have, like, good temperature, like, 98.6 98 degrees Celsius or something. Yeah, so that's the, uh, yeah. And then, um, and then let me talk about like this uh, pH level thing. Uh, so pH, like acid, like alkaline, neutral. Um, so you need to, let me like do the test, like cooking noodles, like in the uh, water, like that's neutral. Um, a lot of noodles like had actually melted in the cooking water, uh, losing, uh, you know, a lot of noodles in the water. Um, but like when you cook, when we cook like, uh, light alkaline, uh, the water like that's light alkaline. Then you know we the amount of noodles like we lose like that actually was least. So um, then like cancer is actually alkaline. So like you know when you cook noodles, the, some of the cancer actually get um, released to the cooking water, making the water kind of light alkaline. So you know uh, cancer is works in that kind of way too. So pH level like in the cooking water is important too. Um, yeah, some of these um, are, uh, so um, noodle sizes are also important. Like when you, like usually like normal noodle size is actually in the one on the left. Um, so the vista is actually bigger than the thickness. Um, then the, when, you, when there's a cut surface, so the water gets from getting the penetrated noodle like from the side, like the cut surface. Um, but like if you have like noodles that are like uh, that with the width like bigger than and uh, smaller than the thickness, 
then you have like larger cut surface. So um, the water gets into the noodle like faster. So the noodle gets soggy faster. So noodle size is also important. All right, so um, I think enough with our, my lecture and then like, um, so let's start like making noodles. And then, um, so we prepared um, these ingredients. Yes, so over here, like we prepared like flour, uh, that's ramen flour. Um, the protein content is like about like 12%, 13%. Um, then uh, egg white, egg white powder, it's in powder form. Um, then this is gluten, this is like pure extractable gluten from the uh, wheat and uh, water, right? And then uh, salt, um, then kansi. Kansi, this kansi is like, it's called like aka, like AKA aka kansi, like that's like, uh, has a put, um, sesame carbonate like 60%, um, sodium carbonate 40%, that ratio. Um, and here's the uh, actual recipe. So uh, solids, solid ingredients. So we usually like, cut it, like uh, separate like ingredients into like solid and then liquid. Um, so solid ingredients, flour, egg white, uh, gluten, and uh, liquid ingredients like water, kansi, um, salt. So like kansi salt like dissolving the water and then making the liquid. That's 20% to the, the solid ingredients. So the total um, solid like 4,000 grams, uh, liquid like 1,120 grams, uh, total weight 5,120 grams. All right, let's, so let's start making noodles. All right, so over here we have um, our uh, noodle making machine. Uh, it's, called, it's called like it's called a Richmond One machine, Richmond One machine. All right, um, then it's got like 10 kilo a mixer. Um, the minimum batch is uh, four, four kilograms. So four kilograms of a solid. So first, um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, put in like all the, all the solids. Right, and then um, we'll start we'll start the mixer and put the timer on. Just one minute, one minute of like we call like air mixing, like just uh, solid. And uh, while it does that, uh, we're gonna dissolve the uh, uh, salt and tansy into the water. Yeah, you need to make sure that it's they all like dissolved pretty well to the water. Yeah, important thing about like mixing is that like, so this mixer um, mixes at the speed of like 60 rotations per minute. And that's the idea like, you know, through like our like um, years of research, um, they open like we found out that that's the proper like ideal speed for like mixing uh, dough for uh, noodles. Okay, and then so, so we add water. You see that holes, right? Holes in the lid. Um, so you need to add like water, like little by little. So um, the water goes through the holes to be to be like to drip drip through the wall, or the holes to be added to the flour, like um, bit by bit. And like while it's mixing, so like it's very um, yeah important to have those holes. Okay, so first like we mix it for four minutes, and then like after that uh, we'll open it and then kind of clean them. Um, because like there are some parts of the dough like that's more wet than the others. 
So we need like kind of like you know mix them up and then like kind of um, have that water like distributed like evenly. Okay. Um, so but we can just wait for it like you know because um, you know it's gonna be I don't want to bore you guys. So um, let's start uh, doing the next process. So after mixing, right? Uh, so we did the resting, like first resting. And um, so, so you see this dough, right? That's, that's really, it's really dry. Yeah, I wish you guys could uh, touch it, touch so I feel the dough. It's, um, it's almost like a wet flower, like it's very powdery, um, very dry, which means that like, you know, this, like, this dough is like very hard. So to process this kind of dough, like you need, you need to have like a certain equipment, like this kind of machine um, with a bigger uh, roller. So uh, first, like what um, we're gonna do is that like, we're gonna feed this dough into a set of rollers and uh, through a kind of like narrow gap of these, like between these rollers to make a rough sheet of dough. Um, so we said that this is the, this is the um, dial, this dial C, like it's a, it's a, it controls like a clearance between the two rollers. And then um, now it's zero, but like, yeah, rotating it to like make, um, make the roller gap like one millimeter. Okay, so let's start rolling. And uh, we're going kind of slow first to uh, apply like really good, that like really high pressure like in this dough. So we wanna go slow. <clears throat> Yeah, so that dough, dough came out from the other end. And yeah, and then like we're gonna roll it on like rolling pin, wind it on the rolling pin. Um, and then uh, just, yeah, let it, let it uh, wind automatically. Yeah, just so feeding it, feeding it. And then, um, yeah, but like we wanna go slow. Um, this process. Yeah, if, if some of you guys like had been to, um, uh, you know, one of those like uh, Hakata ramen shops, like uh, famous shops like Ipudo, like Ichiban, um, so they serve these kind of noodles. Um, it's very thin and hard noodles. And then um, they um, uh, serve it in uh, like very thick, like rich, um, Tonkotsu. Tonkotsu means like pork bones, pork bone broth. And um, yeah, so so this Yeah, and then like I'm just adding the rest of the water. And then uh, we're gonna mix it for like 11 more minutes. Yeah, so it's like, it's very thin and hard noodle. And it's like, well, like you are eating it in uh, like very rich pork bone broth. And then they, they cook the pork bones like for like almost like 10 hours, like, you know, 12 hours. Um, yeah, some shops like cook it for like, you know, over uh, 20 hours, like for a long, long time. It's very thick, rich, but like the noodle itself is like kind of very hard and like thin. And uh, they, they serve it, they like portion size is like very small uh, on purpose. Because like this type of noodles like gets very soft fast in the hot soup. So they want to, um, you know, Want you to like enjoy the texture. Uh, they want you to enjoy the texture, right? So um, they want to when you when you just, like eat it fast, and then like you know encourage you like uh, order more portion. 
Okay, so we are doing the um, combining process. So after that, that was that previous process was called like um, rough forming. So like we are making just rough sheet of dough first, and then like we are gonna separate it, separate the dough like into like two separate sheets, and then combine them through the rollers to um, basically to like make it for make it like stronger, make it firmer. And um, because like that was one millimeter, and then we are combining them. Uh, so combining means like one millimeter plus one millimeter uh, equivalent, equivalent of dough like it was going into through the roller. So we set the uh, roller gap to 1.5 millimeter. Okay. Um, we don't want to uh, thin it too drastically. Um, because like that would like destroy the, the gluten structure that you know, that's uh, that's developed through the uh, mixing and like resting process. So we want to like kind of gradually thin it, gradually thin. So we we apply this um, uh, rule called like 70% rule. So we multiply the um, that like the thickness by 70%, and then that, that so that we make it. So we make that number um, the roller gap that sheeting. So to calculate it, right? So like one plus one, two millimeter, uh, and then 0 0.7, 70% uh, 0 0.7, so 1.4, or like for the sake of simplicity, like just round it up to uh, 1.5 millimeter. And then like at this time, again, like, you know, we want to go slow want to go slow because we want to apply like really good pressure um, at this uh, process the dough yes and then um, so next round like we're gonna do another um, Combining process to make sure that like you know we, we have like um, good uh, like very firm uh, little texture. So that was like 1.5 millimeter, and then we like separating again um, to uh, to separate seeds of dough, but like we combine them them like through the roller, right? So that's 1.5 millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, like three millimeter equivalent dough is going through the roller. So um, the roller gap we are setting it. To, uh, is uh, like two, two millimeter, so three millimeter times 70% like 0.7, 2.1, but for the sake of simplicity, like we round it down to Yeah, so, you know, it's the combining process um, you know, makes the dough stronger. And then, like, for so certain um, types of, like, noodles that, like, they, they just do the combining process, like, once. Uh, for other types of noodles, like, they com do the combining process, like, twice. I mean, three times. Um, but basically, like, basically, like um, that's twice. And um, from this point on, um, we need to, we should turn on the, this is a automatic duster. Uh, so this is a dusting. It's like after second combined process, you know, we, we don't want this um, dough to stick together, right? So we want to um, run this uh, kind of duster, right? Um, but like for this kind of noodle, like you don't actually have to dust it. You don't actually have to dust it um, because, like, it's just dry, dry enough. Like, you know, there's no um, risk of like getting, and uh, getting it, yeah, getting it like stuck. Okay, so that was one on uh, two millimeter, right? So remember the 70% rule. Um, so we are 
multiply them by 70%, like 0.7, two times 0.7, like 0.4, but like run it down to, run it up to like 1.7, uh, 1.5. Okay, and then like from this point on, uh, we can go faster. We can go faster than rolling. Okay, let's see. But like, just for you guys to see, right? Um, I'm gonna turn on the duster. <laughs> and um, you can actually control the like uh, volume of dusting. Control the volume of dusting. Um, so the wetter, wetter the noodle, like the more you need to dust, right? So you can control the dusting. Okay, um, so that was 1.5 millimeter. And uh, I think we can almost start cutting it, but like, uh, let's do it one more time, like 1.0 millimeters, so like 1.5 times like 0.7. Um, I can't do the calculation in my, in my head, but like, you know, it's, it's around 1.0 millimeter. We can go through like 1.0 millimeter. And the next round, the, we're gonna we're gonna thin and cut at the same time, and then portion it. And um, the, the kind of cutters, so it's gonna be cutting, right? Um, the kind of cutters that we use is just this kind of cutters, like in there are different types, different sizes, different shapes. Um, so this like number 10 means like um, this each group is three millimeter. Each group is three millimeter. That's like, it's called like square number 10. Uh, square number 12. Um, and then like 20, 20 is like actually the most popular one. That's 1.5 millimeter. Um, 22, 24. So 24 is very thin. That's like 1.1 1. Um, 1 millimeter. And then 26 is almost almost like 1.0. So uh, the cutter we're going to use to cut that dough is uh, um, 26. All right. So let's bring it over here. And. Um, yeah, the thickness, right? Thickness dough is actually um, bigger than the, um, you know, the roller gap that we set. Because like that moment, like it's going through the roller gap, it's it's actually 1.0, but like um, it's, you know, like after that, like it just expands back. So the actual um, thickness of dough is actually, it was always bigger than the roller gap. Okay, let's start cutting. Yeah, so putting the cutter over there in that um, in place, and then um, put that the cutter mode, and then. Uh, yeah, prepare the like conveyor belt, right? And then um, you have this nice little low chair that's in the caster, like it's these like move around. Okay, the dough is, the mixing is done. So we put the duster on, the, on top of like uh, this, uh, Maybe I'll like to dust the noodles that are coming out. Okay, so let's start cutting. Uh, 
And then uh, you can actually um, control the length of the noodles here, longer, shorter. So the longer, actually bigger the noodle portion. So depending on your um, shop, like depending on like, you know, uh, the shop's um, preference, like, uh, you know, you can, you can make it shorter, longer, um, you can control the length. By controlling length, you're controlling the uh, serving size. The noodle is coming. Noodle is coming now. Um, so, as I said, uh, um, this type of noodles um, typically um, they um, make the serving size like really small, almost like 80 grams to like 100 grams on purpose. Um, you know, for you guys to, I mean, for customers to be able to like enjoy the noodle texture. And then um, we're going to talk about, we're going to show you guys the, uh, later um, how to cook noodles properly. But like, so this type of noodles are um, very short um, amount of cooking time. Um, it's, uh, it's usually like 10 seconds to like almost like 60 seconds. And then um, for those of you like who've been to like Hakata style ramen noodles shops, um, um, some of you like maybe like notice like in, uh, in the menu they they have um, they they can let you choose um, you know how you'd like the noodles to be cooked. So you know for those of you like who prefer like hard hard texture, they can cook the noodles like for like 20 seconds. Um, for uh, some people like you know who prefer like softer uh, texture, um, you know they they cook it for like one minute or something. So um, it's kind of interesting. Um, and then, and we want to show you um, how, I mean, some, some people like wonder like, you know, how um, you can um, make the noodles like curly, curly, like wavy. So we like to show like how you do it. So in the cutter, right? This is number 16 cutter. Uh, on the back of the cutter, like we have uh, like a plate, like silicone plates. Um, and then um, the noodles are like try to come out, right? But like noodles get stuck, right? A little bit stuck. And then like kind of noodles, and then the noodles like are getting stuck in there, like uh, kind of get pushed out, pushed out like from the next noodles like that are going in. Um, then in the process, like the noodles get curly. Let me show you. And uh, so this dough is actually like, um, it's very yellow. Um, so we put the, uh, put some um, dye in there, like pigment uh, to make it yellow. Um, you can't make this color like by adding like eggs or something. Uh, you have to like have like some kind of dye in it. All right, so let's start cutting. So it's coming, it comes out like that. And then um, you see like, it's almost like instant noodles. And um, so the level of coldness so you can actually control by um, using like different, like um, thickness, the plate of thickness, um, different size of thickness. Um, and then like uh, control, like adjusting the the gap between the those like plates. So um, this is kind of what we had like for uh, noodle making process. But like um, you see these uh, noodles, different types of noodles like we made today actually. Um, so this is the uh, like 42% uh, whole grain needed uh, noodles. Like it's actually um, 
has a blend of like uh, udon noodles, like which has like uh, lower protein content but like higher viscosity, and uh, ramen noodles, um, which has like um, higher protein but like lower viscosity, and they like it has like very good like unique like texture, noodle texture. And um, this is the same kind of dough um, that we did like for the uh, just for now, um, and then this is um, seaweed powder needed uh, noodles. And this is like chili powder kneading noodles, so different sizes. Um, this is black sesame noodles. Um, you can do with the, like uh, squid ink as well. So it's like it's got like different flavors, um, different like color. Uh, so you know it's kind of interesting. So you you can you can actually like make um, all kinds of noodles, all different kinds of noodles. I, I could say like imagination. Your imagination is like probably the limit, but like, you know, you can make like any, any kind of noodles. Um, so um, let's go over to our kitchen and start cooking some noodles and show you guys like how to cook noodles properly. Okay, um, welcome to our kitchen. Um, we do uh, ramen school here, and we don't school here. And then you see, um, we have like all these like different equipment. Um, so over, over there, like you, you have like, um, they, they, these are like induction cookers, induction cookers, and they like, we uh, cook like um, different types of like soups, broth. Um, and in each pot, it'll be like cooking like different ingredients. Um, so then like later, like we combine, combine them um, so that, um, you know, the students know like how each of the ingredients uh, broth like taste like, and then, um, you know, they, they know like how to combine them. Um, over here, we have um, different types of like, this is a tare, tare, motodare, like um, with the different ingredients um, so, so like, uh, like soy sauce, like, um, uh, fish sauce, like different types. Like we usually make like 40 to like 40, 50 different types, like curry, like, you know, from scratch. And, uh, it's like oil, uh, flavored oil, like different types, like different ingredients. Um, so, you know, like each school, like each class, like we do like all these different um, types of like um, broth, uh, tare, and then like uh, oil, and then like each student like you know goes home like with a complete set of like recipes, um, so that you know, um, and then like you know we've been running this like school like for 20 years, and uh, each school, uh, each class has like you know different students like different ideas, so um, they. Um, you know, we be accumulating all these like different recipes, like different um, ideas. So we have like a huge database of like recipes, like noodles, soups, everything. So um, yeah, after um, this thing is over, like I hope you guys will be able to like, you know, visit us in Kagawa at headquarter, but like, and then uh, visit his school. Um, you know, we'll give you guys a tour. All right, so I'm gonna introduce our instructors. Uh, so Mr. Ikeda, uh, Mr. Ikeda is like being like our chief instructor, like of our school. Um, and uh, Mr. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Ikeda, Mr. Ikeda, the chief instructor. And then Mr. Takeuchi. Uh, yeah, he he's a, he's actually from uh, Canada, and like he speaks like native English, so and the Japanese. And then he, um, I'm gonna ask him to uh, do the, uh, the cooking part. Um, he was like, he speaks English. Um, Mr. Sang, um, would you introduce yourself? And then he's, uh, he speaks Chinese and Japanese. So I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Takeuchi. Hello, my name is Sei Takeuchi, and I'm one of the instructors at the Yamato Noodle School. And um, I'm gonna show you guys how to finish the bowl of ramen. So I'm just gonna use the noodles that you guys made today. And the elements that we have here is that flavored oil and flavoring sauce. In Japanese, we call it motodare. 
and we got sliced leeks and green onion and soft boiled eggs and it's flavored in soy sauce and we got bamboo shoots okay. and I'm just going to quickly talk about how to boil the ramen noodles it's not just putting these into the boiling water there's some uh, important tips for making for boiling the perfect ramen noodles and first you need rapidly boiling boiling water okay? and you need a lot you don't just you don't you can't just have a little because it's just going to clump up the ramen noodles so you got this rapidly boiling water and for these ramen noodles probably boiling time will be around a minute and a half okay? and before putting the ramen noodles into boiling water what you want to do is you want to like massage the noodles a little so it break up the noodles and then when you want to put it in you just don't want to just dump it in you just want to like break it apart as you put it in and start the timer and the, maybe for the first five seconds you want to mix the noodles once again this is to prevent the noodles from clumping up you never want clumped up noodles okay as we wait for the noodles to boil we want to prepare the sauce okay this is a flavoring sauce and flavored oil and I'm heating up the stock over here we're just gonna make a quick simple shoyu ramen soy sauce flavored ramen okay. so I'm pouring in 300 milliliters of the stock this is pork stock Okay, 30 more seconds. As you can see, the noodles are moving around in the boiling water freely. Okay. Now it's a minute and a half. And next important tip is to strain out all the boiling water. You don't want boiling water to stay in the noodles because that's going to dilute the stock. So I'll strain out every single boiling water. And then you want to dump this uh, noodles into the stock, but make sure you don't start from the outside, start from the inside, because that's just going to, you know, pour out the stock. So from the inside, And mix the noodles and you want to line up the noodles and lining up the noodles is not just for the looks it allows a customer to pick up the noodles easier okay next soft boiled eggs and sliced leeks green onion and some bamboo shoots and bamboo shoots is great for changing up the texture in your mouth because the noodles are noodles are chewy and the soup is silky and you want that bamboo shoot to that bamboo shoots has a nice bite to it so it just change up the texture in your mouth okay so here's a simple bowl I'll show you ramen I wanted to have some chashu in here, but we didn't have that right now. So just a quick shoyu ramen with uh, eggs, bamboo shoots, and leek, and a green onion. So we just boiled the noodles for shoyu ramen. So that was about a minute and a half. And let me just quickly talk about the boiling time for the Hakata tonkotsu noodles. And these are very very thin so the boiling time is very short approximately around 30 to 40 seconds and 
when you boil these, once again, you need rapidly boiling boiling water. Okay? You want the noodles to move around freely in the boiling water. And then after 30 seconds, make sure to strain out every single boiling water out of the noodles. 